This is your 2 News Oklahoma Fantasy Football Forecast. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. We're here again. We're here again, as we as we do, as we gather here. Um, a, another another inter- week. interesting week in uh, both fantasy and in the the actual league itself. Um, in our show league, I, I beat uh, originally the projected winner of our league, Michael Sager, by point, right. point 0.1 points. Ooh. Point 0.1. Ooh. Point 0.1 Points, Ooh, that's folks. A, I, I didn't get bit by the stack wow. correctors. I didn't. Not has, there, yet. has there been any yeah. action, any interaction with Sager? Uh, I, I tweeted the the scoreboard at him this morning, mm-hmm. and he was he was bummed about his running backs performance. But that you know, okay, you know he he's not one to give shell out a lot of ill will. So yeah, but yeah, if, if I beat Mike by point one points, that's right. We play each other. What right? a great day that would be. <laughs> you guys Wait, play each other. What, this kind of fantastic week. occasion. <laughs> uh, do we really? I think so. Yeah. That? Okay. Yeah, I think so. You All know, right. my son's managing my team. How's that going? Well, it you know, I'm a lot of coaching. A lot of coaching involved. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'd he's like, I'd I'm be s- surprised if he's making well, the tough he, the tough calls well, he's, really. He sent me out on a mission. He's like, I want Tony Pollard or Jalen Waddle on my team, Dad. Not and I was idea. like, Well, <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have to get to work on this one. <laughs> throw out all your throw out all your plans. <laughs> this is what I need. Yeah, this is what I need. I was like, well, put a bug in his ear, uh, Justin Ross. Tell him have have him tell you that he really needs Justin Ross. On his team. No price is too high. Just we can make something happen. Don't you have Tony Paul? No, I don't. Do you I have, have Justin Waddle? Ross though? I do not have Waddle. Okay. No. Okay. Um. <laughs> So, or we could just make that happen Mike, right here on the pod. You put up a decent amount of points, lost to Annie Brown. Regardless, you put up a ton of points downtown. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I just I felt defeated afterwards, not just because of the loss, because that happens, but you know, with Barkley's injury and Montgomery, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. boy, that's that's a beating right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were saying at, at least before today they said they said uh ah, barkley out maybe three weeks not as bad as it might have sounded and then i saw something later today that they're like oh he might heal quicker than expected but right you, you know yeah right. kind of, I, I doubt he plays this week right. i mean a short notice let him take off thursday come back in you know 10 days or so and yeah. be fully healthy you got matt breda there as the backup who in yeah. several backup roles throughout his career has yeah. never really done much of anything with it yeah, Brita the non cheetah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, so I mean, league storylines wise, like for for fantasy, it's I mean, and I mean, he's breaking real NFL records. Puka Nakua, oh, just keeps it coming. Wow. There's a lot of FOMO involved with that. I'm like, what is going on? I know, right? I Twenty like, targets. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Twenty. And all that, all this after, like in the off season, Stafford's wife came out and said he's just not connected yeah. with these young guys. Yeah, you know, he's just yeah, right. there, there's like, something going on here. I don't know. Did, at, you know. did we ever get to that on this podcast? We didn't. I had it written down on the first week, but I we didn't get to one it. of my one of my favorite story. In no way, shape, or form did that make me think I don't want Matt Stafford on my team or this right. isn't going to work this year. Yeah. It, trust me, you don't need that much difference in age in the workplace. Yeah, to be like, you know what? I don't know what these kids are talking about. Well, and it's don't don't like it. Yeah, don't bring it. Around. <laughs> like you can still make it happen. We're we're making the Vosots happen here at Two News Oklahoma yeah. every single night. Doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm old enough to be the father of some of these kids we're hiring at this point. Uh, no, look. <laughs> My greatest regret, I I did not give enough thought to the season or the draft going into it. If I had, I would have I would have thought I'm almost positive I would have thought my, to myself, you know what? The Rams sort of took last year off. McVay yeah. was just enjoying like he knew with the injuries it's not going to happen. He was laying low and he was going to have something for the entire league this year. I should have known identify who they may go to. Right in it, who who well, who Cooper who's Cup off the been. radar, but but Kyron Williams I should have known yeah. he was my guy at Notre Dame yeah, I knew that undrafted or you. not undrafted or not that guy is a ball player mm. ball playing fool and Nakua like honestly if if I had just had the thought hey but, I think the Rams are gonna have something for people in do the opposite of fading them go strong right. be a be bullish on the Rams. That that would have been really smart. Even though I, I don't Puka have any Rams, Nakua but. on my team, I just want to. That's wanna, what we were wondering. We, we couldn't remember who picked him up. You have me. Nakua. I have yeah. Nakua. 
I right s- here. Well, no, I still well don't know who the heck he is, though. <laughs> well done. Did he? Who did he play? I remember. Con- I think BYU. I think oh, okay. BYU. I was say, I mean, he could certainly walk in the door, and I'd be that's, like, "Who's that guy?" That's Look, the thing about the NFL. Yeah. Kyron Williams falls into that that family too. It is, and and we were just talking about. You were saying Detroit, and mm-hmm. there's just something missing. Mm-hmm. It it amazes me. I've been watching these teams for almost 40 years now. In some cases, the Bears never have a quarterback who's any good. The Lions are just never any good, period. The Browns are somewhere south of the Lions. Yeah. And then there are franchises that just have it figured out. Yeah. And just it's so draft draft franchises more than yeah. now, granted, a lot of people win with sorry uh teams that have, you know, a wide receiver one who catches a lot of passes. Cause I, I get that. But I, I trust franchises that know what they're doing. Whoever the Rams got when it was Brady with the Patriots and mm-hmm. quarterbacks, right? I, that's probably what matters most. Franchises and quarterbacks. Just find the guys they're going to be giving it to and throwing to. I will add some caution to the wind. Uh, several years ago, there was a receiver named Travis Fulgham. And um, oh, Travis, Travis Fulgham, Fulgham had a stretch of about two, three weeks that were very, and obviously not as great as Puka Nakua, but very awesome uh-huh. and i was all in on travis fulgham <laughs> well one he was an eagle but i was all in right right and that yeah. guy faded fast <laughs> yeah really fast you gotta you gotta also have his backup that's 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 how, <laughs> that's how it works <laughs> and travis you gotta fulgham, be ready for puka nakua to well, find I mean, his way back to the pine well yeah coop uh cooper cup is coming back here uh, supposedly if he does come back and tutu atwell is um i mean he's he was a top round pick a couple years sure, ago yeah. so uh, maybe, you know, sometimes they're just a little slower to develop. Yeah. I say, and that's been my surprise by it. Like not only, you know, Puka Nakua getting all these targets, but it's still being able to be spread around. Like Kyron Williams is getting a ton of work mm-hmm. and, uh, and Tutu Atwell is getting a ton of work at the same time. Like it's, it's really flowing in that offense where like you, for a guy who allegedly could not connect with his players, he yeah. apparently connects with all of them pretty, yeah. pretty well. Yeah. And, we, and now they're trying to trade Cam, Cam Akers. Right. Which, right. You know, which they sh- They've been trying to do for 10 right. years. It seems. That's yeah. the thing that was kind of the writing on the wall for, you know, since he's been there mm-hmm. has been, we're trying to move on from this guy. So at, whether or not he lands with a team this year or they just keep him inactive and, you know, have him. Uh, what are the odds that your two starting receivers are Tutu and Puka? Tutu and Puka. Yeah. Uh-huh. Should have drafted him just for the names. That think, is elite. I think Cooper. Love it. <laughs> yeah, then just a, a regular Cooper. Hey, Cooper. Um, so outside of that, I, I wanted to touch on uh, touch on the Bengals um, because you know obviously in every draft coming into this season in the last mm-hmm. couple seasons, Bengals offensive players a huge part of those drafts. Um, Burrow, whether it be this calf issue that keeps coming up, yep. you know, it's if, be. if that's what his issue is, sure. You know, we they did have T Higgins had a resurgence this last year, fantasy wise, or this last week, fantasy wise. So he's been. He finally put up some points, but Jamar Chase hasn't done much of anything. Mm. Joe Mixon's been pretty average. Um, is there cause for concern? Because they, they tend to start slow every year, Yeah, it seems. Um, but is there something different about this particular iteration of this team versus the last couple of years? Well, it, my guess is it's got to be the injury in the training camp time lost uh, for Burrow. I, mm-hmm. Eventually they will, I'm pretty sure. Uh, get kick it, it into yeah. high gear. Some, got Jamar Chase close over there. Yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, but how how long will that be? Um, how impatient are you? I, I, I would love to. I don't have Jamar Chase on my team, but if you do, you paid a high price, right? And so uh, it hurts to have to sit there and wait. And it could, I don't know if sink a season is too much, but, you know. Depending if it's on how another, the rest of your yeah, draft if it's, if it's another couple weeks, that's that's rough, no question. Yeah. They have the Rams division, this week. That division. What are they? The The Browns? The Steelers, I don't know. I mean, a bunch of junk you're facing a couple of good defenses, though. Sure, a couple very of times in the sure. Steelers and Ravens. Yeah, that that, and then yeah, yeah. I, I think they'll get it together. Uh, but it's all to TBT on uh, Burrow coming back here and how long. I mean, uh, you know, if this thing sticks around for six more weeks, and we've got major, major issues. If yep. if yes. he can get on the mend in two weeks, and there's there's great hope, and you got to hold hold the line, but. After that, you might have to call off the dogs. And, you know, apparently, like, with Joe Burrow, maybe there's a possibility he could miss his coming week if this mm-hmm. calf thing really is flaring up again. Which um, he's my quarterback, so thanks right, a lot. Uh, yeah. You can pick up uh, Danny Jones is back there on the go. radar. Danny he's, he's back on the radar. All right. Uh, <laughs> From the worst yeah. offense. Can we go into the Dallas Cow- You know, as Eagle fan, I hate, 
I hate the Cowboys, but oh my god, it's kind of hard to ignore when they're oh, that just annihilating that Micah Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Just though? a pleasure to watch the man go to work. What happened from last year to this year? I don't know. They've had the pieces. I don't know. Last year felt a little disjointed at times. I I, I think uh, maybe there is something to McCarthy sort of putting it all on his plate and and coaching for his you know for his job if yeah. you will and. Just having a quarterback who's squared away and healthy, um, getting Zeke out probably helped more than I thought it might. You know, I mean, that was, even though it became obvious mm -hmm, down the true. stretch last year that Pollard was the better player, that was still, and I don't know that Zeke made great waves, but it's still uncomfortable when you're paying a guy that amount and need him that little. Um, maybe less is more there. I, 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 it's And look, you mentioned Michael Parsons. To me, that's like that defense so far has just been special and that that makes offense a little more carefree. I don't know, it's just been a less drama than usual in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's it. Um, and, and I mean let, I mean what is it? When did uh Dak get hurt last year? When when were the Cooper Rush games? Well, he got hurt in week 1, right? I thought so. Yeah. I, I think in the opener the, against the because Bucks. Because that was the big part. Their whole first half of the season really was it, it was, was a mess. It was the Cooper Rush situation yeah. and then and then obviously when That's cooper right. rush has a has a good game for yeah. cooper rush then you're wondering okay you know you know dallas fans are like oh get Dak out of here yeah, maybe yeah. we just need somebody else uh but you know obviously if that sort of core stays healthy and you know cd went off this last yeah. weekend you know Gosh, like, he was good yeah so it even with you know I, i'm surprised they managed to keep sauce gardner off of him most of the time, right. sauce, is, sauce was not on him I, no. for the some majority. Of the game. I, I mean, I know I'm just a little old weather man, but some things just befuddle me. Like, why isn't Sauce covering him? Why isn't him? Sauce following him ever? Yeah, yep. people defend differently that way. Every once in a while, you'll have the corner follow a guy everywhere, yeah. but usually you can scheme something, put a guy in the slot, or sure. you know, move him around and. Yeah, no, you're right. When he was making plays, Sauce wasn't around. No, we're right. Okay, okay. Well, let's yeah. just let that keep happening. Yeah. I mean, like. This, the Jets' defensive coordinator is supposed to be brilliant, you know? But uh, Robert Sala, I mean, that's his that's his bread and butter, that defense. And to allow the that. Jet, the Jets need to lose their next 15 games. Go 1-16 and 16 and get Caleb, Caleb Williams, Williams and just move on. Down yeah. The road, right? I mean, like, the last thing they need is Aaron Rodgers trying to come back. I don't, I don't even... Because it'll, what, it'll what just be the same. It'll be the same hype train coming yeah. up to let to the next year, except he'll be 40. You <laughs> don't need it. You don't need it. But you need a quarterback. And I don't think the guy you've got right now is ever going to be the answer. So you no. might as well just take this opportunity to put sauce on uh, fullbacks or something. You know what I mean? Just be <laughs> ridiculous with what you lose all the games, Jets. But you got Carson Wentz out there. I mean, I, I don't understand these things, you know, but never will. Well, I, I'm I'm with you. Maybe uh, they are I, taking. I, I bought the Carson Wentz uh, thing for a long time, and now I'm I, not saying like, he's I, wonderful, but. I mean, he's a lot better than Garrett Wilson. And One you know what that defense? Zach, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, sorry, Zach Wilson. Why Why not try Garrett Wilson, a quarterback? Let's go with that. Let's I see mean, what happens. I mean, how bad see could if it that be? Works. It <laughs> couldn't, be, couldn't be that bad. He's dynamic. I would love to see it, actually. Um. So, yeah, so that's obviously been a whole a whole deal. Mike, you did call it. The, uh, the, the Seahawks did go into Detroit and beat the Lions. Yeah. Our guy, Tyler Lockett, had a... Awesome game, clutch, oh, clutch game-winning touchdown. Awesome. The whole didn't deal. they do this last year too at the same time? They've they've played the last two years before now, and it's been a similar shootout. Where Gino's heart, on, heartbreaking yeah. loss type. Yeah, of deal. that's yeah. weird. They've got uh, their number. They do. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the deal with that is because it was it was funny because I I was just only experiencing it watching the red zone, and they would show a decent amount of Seahawks plays because they spent a lot of time in the red zone. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Lions were hardly ever, Lions offense hardly ever shown. Right. Except it was a bomb every now yeah. and then. It was just yeah. a, like a 40 yard bomb to Josh Reynolds and they'd show that and then be like, all right, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause the, the rest of the offense wasn't doing that much. And obviously, uh, David I saw Ma Amon Ra out in the sidelines a lot. Yeah, he got hurt like it's third quarter late or like early fourth quarter. He got hurt. He's, he ended up coming back in overtime. Um, okay. But, Rumor turf toe. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'd seen like cramps or something like yeah. he was, it was something that they. God, you hope it's not turf toe. That thing. I know that's one of those sort of lingering type, uh, type of injuries for guys. Um, so in that game, David Montgomery goes out with a, a thigh, they, what they called this, a thigh injury. Um, they said he could miss about two weeks, could be more than that. Oh great! Um, so Lucky obviously me. that pushes Jameer Gibbs up front, mm -hmm. and you know when 
when Montgomery went out in that game, Gibbs did not have the same sort of room mm-hmm. that he's mm-hmm. used to. Uh, they did have Craig Reynolds, who they've had as a backup for the last couple of seasons, and he, you know, he's super hit or miss. Not really somebody I would rely on as far as picking up in place of Montgomery or anything like that. But sure. you do know, you know, with Craig, they love the multi back approach mm-hmm. and Gibbs is going to be the receiving. He's not going to be the power guy. If you want to pick up Reynolds and hope for a, a touchdown dependent game, then, you know, with their powerful offense, it might, yeah. might turn out. Yeah. And that's the thing too, with it. There are a ton of injuries like running, like Nick yeah. Chubb, right. Nick Chubb last night was totally blows out his knee. Um, you know, it's one of those ones that like you, yeah. rem- like if you saw they didn't show it on the broadcast, but of right. course social media finds it and you end up seeing it yeah, on Twitter it's, or whatever yeah. or X uh-huh. and you, yeah. you know, it ends up, you know, ingrained in your mind, uh, that pushes obviously Jerome Ford mm-hmm. to the top of their lineup. Who he played, he had twenty five points yeah. um, in that game, and that was, you know, Chubb had already rushed for sixty four yeah. yards in that game before he got hurt, and then Ford comes out and still manages to put up twenty five points in yeah. that in that game. So he's going to be at the top of our waiver wires uh, for a lot of leagues. I know I have my one league uh, that we do waiver wires uh, the night after Monday Night Football, and so all of the. Uh, that's the. It was supposed to be breaking news. That did not come out as breaking news. <laughs> that's a pretty, what is going that's on? That's a pretty calm See, breaking, news. breaking news. <laughs> so, I thought. Oh no, it's still going. Uh, we don't have rights to that song. Anyway, we played it under less than three uh-huh. seconds. But anyway, uh, breaking news: Kareem Hunt is visiting the Cleveland Browns right now. I, I was wondering because he's been at the top of when you know you list, look at lists of like trending players and that sort of thing. Kareem Hunt's been up there, and obviously he would be. We need a breaking fr- news little natural. button. Yeah, you know, I need to, one of these days I need to go through here and actually fix some of these. Uh, oh, I think that's just our... Football forecast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hit the wrong one. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Chubb goes out. Ford is obviously the top. Um, he went for like 60 some dollars in one of my leagues right? this last night. Um, Would he go for 60 knowing that Kareem Hunt's there now? Right, that's know? the thing. I don't... Well, I'll, I'll say this, and I hope oh, by the time people listen to this on my, on my home league, they... My I almost traded Aaron Jones for Alexander Madison at sixty five dollars, um, and I was going to go one hundred thirty bucks yeah. on a, just that's how much money I would have had right. in my free agent budget. One hundred thirty bucks on Jerome Ford because I'm thought I'm all in, and I'll get Alexander Madison. I'll have those two, and that will carry me the rest of the season. And then he said he backed out of it, and <laughs> then I started thinking, okay, well, Cream Hunt's now visiting. This might not. Have, this might have worked yeah, out. Yeah, and the you better. never know. Like Cream Hunt, obviously was not really on anyone's radar right. up until now. Mm-hmm. So like how much has he been? I, I assume he's stayed in shape, but you never know when guys aren't really in training sure. camp and they're, they go multiple weeks. But he does the know the offense. Right. And that's, so. that's the thing. He's very familiar with that, uh, with that team franchise and all that. But Jerome Ford looked good. He did. He you looked know, really good. Prior to this visit, I might've gone a hundred percent on uh, Jerome Ford with Kareem Hunt visiting. I might go 50% now. Yeah. That's just me. Okay. That's uh, good. I just put in my uh, waiver wire <laughs> offer. So <laughs> you, just, you just put an 80 good, on the. <laughs> good to know what you. Uh, okay. $51. <laughs> <laughs> the price is um, right. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, obviously, so a lot of these other injuries that are really m- making people sort of flock to the waiver wire because there's been a lot of really, really big time names on the uh, on the injury list. Mm-hmm. Austin Eckler still dealing with an ankle issue. They're still not. They don't have a timetable for him coming back yet. Josh Kelly did not do very well in his uh, his substitution for him this last week. Um, Jalen Waddell had a concussion protocol issue. Devontae Adams also in protocol. They said he might end up playing, though. Like, it might just be a truly precautionary type deal with Adams. Jacoby Myers, same deal with the Raiders. Uh, he he had a much more severe concussion, it seems like, um, in week one, and there is still a chance that he might not play this coming right. week. Um, and so, obviously, there you have uh, two tight ends. Um. Obviously, there you have two tight ends in uh, Mayer and Austin Hooper who, you know, depending on how you feel about that Raiders offense mm-hmm. and up against the Steelers defense this weekend, you know, you might you might not feel too too strong yeah. about playing. Yeah, I, I took guys. a flyer on, on Mayer uh, and Kincaid, uh, it, both on my bench. Just felt like one of those rookies would pop, and at the moment it clearly looks like it'll be Kincaid. Um, you know, I, I would not expect uh, my guy uh, Mayer to... to bust out this week against the Steelers, but eventually I do like 
do like having him on my bench for maybe later in the year because I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if he's one of those guys who is a quick study and, you know, by midseason or a little bit later uh, could be a nice little option. But not yet. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the things. It's one of those things, like, he, he's a guy who's definitely project he projected in the draft to be like, okay, he could be Jimmy G's guy. And Jimmy yeah. G, obviously, with the history with the George right. Kittle type, like, sure. you know he's a tight, he's a fan uh -huh. of his tight ends. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and just the throws he can make and can't right. make. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a tight end passing <laughs> that's, that's right. fella. <laughs> um, so, at, another couple notes. Uh Deontay Johnson still dealing with the hamstring. They put him on the IR. George okay. Pick, George Pickens had a real good game last night. Yeah, um, I mean a chunk of that was the seventy-one One yard yeah, yeah. <laughs> touchdown, yep. but still um, they all count. That's right. And outside of that, he's still like after that play, he really started yeah, to pick up and got up a lot something. more targets. He's, it, his athleticism is wild. On yeah. one of the plays, I don't know if you saw it. He it just caught like a little pass uh, out toward the sideline and didn't really try to hurdle somebody, but like just jumped at them for. <laughs> <laughs> reasons that were like sort of unbeknownst man i don't think the tackler knew what to do with it and he was a smaller guy and so uh anyway pickens will just kind of blow your mind with what yeah. he can do athletically that said it hasn't all been put together for him no, just it's, yet it's and so he's not somebody you feel yeah. really good counting on no. but there's no doubt he can like lead you to victory yes kind of out of nowhere it, uh, it, nice to have his you know one of your uh, third or fourth receivers if you will yeah and it's kind of strange just the way like his his best displays of athleticism almost never count. That's right. I mean, yes, that's right. <laughs> because it, it's always like way. he's got like a foot outside out of bounds already, yeah. or the ball was like five yards high, and uh -huh. he's still catching it, but it never counts. But uh -huh. it's like, wow, that was cool. <laughs> Better on Sports Center than your fantasy. That's right. Team. Yeah, that's that's the George Pickens experience. Um, Aaron Jones still dealing with the hamstring. No. Um, you know, they didn't. They seemed optimistic about it initially, but he also didn't practice at all yeah. last week. Um, so that's still one to watch. AJ Dillon did not do well in his um, absence, but mm -hmm. uh, but the Packers' offense still did really well. And Jordan, yeah. Jordan Love and those he had he had a whole. It, it reminded me of the Aaron Rodgers Packers, where it was just a bunch of receivers I didn't know. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the name Jones made me think of it. Tony Jones Jr. scoring a couple times for the Saints last. I mean, is oh that, yeah. I mean, do you think that's? It's tough if Jamal Williams is yeah. actually out this week. Tony Jones is certainly worth like flex consideration. Yeah. Um, if not, then or if Jamal Williams plays, I wouldn't even. Yeah. Sure. I wouldn't even bother with him, and especially like I wouldn't spend a ton on him even to pick him up if you're struggling as if you've already spent a lot on yep. your waiver wire because Kamara's coming back in like two more weeks. Yes, that's right. That will be two weeks. Um, so outside of that, uh, outside of like straight up injuries, I mean, with Indianapolis, Zach Moss, mm -hmm. um. Zach Moss had a pretty good game, uh, and really, it he didn't start picking it up until Anthony Richardson went down. Right. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So it's one of those things like he's a good start. Like I started him in one of my leagues um, this last week, and obviously he did really well. But if it's going to be Minshew and not Richardson, I'll keep starting. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Not be a bad idea because the offense is just so much different. That's good insight there. It, it no, you're right. It is. And do we know what where Richardson? stands at the moment no i i had i hadn't seen an update since yesterday and it was still just you know your standard going through the protocol yeah. type deal um obviously if obviously you'd want to see him be able to participate in practice in the next wednesday thursday sessions yeah. to sort of confirm that but if he is out longer then if Mitch, if Minshew starts then zach moss is an easy start for me sure yeah um, oh, good point one of the last guys that have really been, we talk about these guys who kind of have been sort of coming out of nowhere, like these younger receivers who are putting up a ton of points. Nico Collins yeah. for Houston has been really showing out, and C.J. Stroud, while that that team is pretty bad. Still, right, yeah. But the, he's really spreading it around, and like yeah. C.J. Stroud, especially this last week, it, like a lot of guys were get, getting a lot of work yeah. on I, that Houston offense. I got a chance to see just a bit of that, and uh, man, I think Stroud's going to be a player. I mean, it, it worries so me accurate. because of the franchise. That's right, that's right. The accuracy is just, that is clearly what you want in that league. Uh, and just seems like he could, at times at Ohio State, seemed... Uh, a little too, not too cool for school, but just like, not a going through the motions thing exactly, but it just, you wondered how much he was really straining or working. Uh, that To be on it as much as he has in just your first couple of starts as a rookie, I, like I've been impressed. I um, he's, he's a guy that I would like to have if I had a, a Futures League, yeah. uh, you know, because I, I think the future is really bright. And that was always his thing at his Ohio State. Like you said, it, it kind of, he seemed kind of casual, yeah. you know, and it, 
and it, he never looked bad at Ohio State except nope. when he played teams that brought a lot of pressure. Yeah. Because they obviously playing with elite athletes at Ohio State, you're not used to That's facing. Right. You that, always that had that advantage. Which... And so that was kind of the knock on him yep. coming out is like, okay, he's pl- plenty accurate. Doesn't have a huge arm, but can still he can still yeah. throw and, you know, when the pressure comes, what is he going to do? Uh-huh. This this touches fantasy, but it's more of like just a football NFL observation I've had for years and years. Go through the history of the game. And it is very hard to find elite quarterbacks who did not deal with um, some real difficulty coming up. You usually in college, so I'm talking about sort of you know the evaluation of quarterbacks for the NFL draft. Uh, like Matt Leinart had it was made he had it made in the shade, and it mm-hmm. just is different when you go to the next level for both Young and Stroud. I that concerned me. You know, yeah. uh, neither guy really big. Uh, and both had superior talent on their side in almost every college game they played. Sometimes that works out okay, and, and sometimes those guys learn some some tough lessons in the NFL. Um, it, they'll both they're both in for some tough lessons this yeah. season. I mean, that's just a, two games ain't you know the entirety yeah. of a of a rookie <laughs> season. So both are, but they, I I like what I've seen from Stroud uh, for sure. Young, we'll see. Jury's out for me, but I, I like Stroud so far. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do. Mike had to step out. There's a breaking weather. Is that what we have going on? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> it's above my pay grade. Yeah, I'll right. tell you that. Um, so we will get to our primetime picks, and I'll get, I'll get mics from him at some yeah, point. Exactly. Um, I'll play this we'll silly music. I love um, it. So coming into this week, we got Pittsburgh at Las Vegas on Are, are we going to talk football. about last week? I got to win. You got to win. I got to win, win. You win. You win. You I dared faded, to go under on Tyreek Hill. I faded Tyreek Hill. You like that? <laughs> well, Bill Belichick says, I'm not going to let that guy That's beat right. me. That's um, right. So you faded Tyreek Hill. You got to win. Um, I stand at 1-2. and two. You're at 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Mike is at 0-3. Oh, mm. I wish he was here for this. I know. Yeah. Um, so who, who do you have uh, in for this game? Yeah. I, well, I love that Steelers defense. It, this is good. It's going to come back to bite me. I'm not going to fade the Tulsa guy. Josh <laughs> Jacobs at 17-1. I'm not doing it, sure. but I will. And I guess this could. Do I need to make two picks in case Devontae doesn't play? Is that the deal? If you plan on pick, picking Devontae as your first pick, then I would make a second pick. All right. Let's uh, let's fade Devontae. That is my pick at 20.7 points is what we have him at. I just, the Steelers are killers, man. I saw that defense last night. I, I don't think the Raiders, especially Garoppolo. Don't like it. Don't like the Raiders scoring much at all this week. Um, my second pick would be, how about I go over for Mayer? I bet it, with the Mayer? Steelers bearing down, as much as they bring, Garoppolo's going to want to get it out quick. At three points, all he needs to do really is catch a ball or two, and I'm over. So uh, going with my guy Mayer if, in case uh, Devontae doesn't play. Okay. Uh, I'm going to – I'm going to uh... – I'm going to go with the local connection here. I'm going to go Jalen Warren. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over 10.7 points. He, he's got points. some juice, doesn't he? I mean, yeah. Like, when he gets the ball in his hands, it looks good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. And Najee's been on yeah. sort of the downturn, so you wonder if those yeah. ca- carries start uh-huh. to shift a little uh-huh. bit, you know? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I like that pick. I'm going to go over on Warren. I like that pick. And we don't know Mike's pick, but I guarantee he's going to 0-4. That's, 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 <laughs> that's right. Let's All right, for, uh, for Mike Collier, Caden McFarlane, I am Ryan Love. We'll see you guys next week.